Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and this is my final report on the Toronto Centre federal by-election that's happening on Monday, where I will register my 78th probable loss. So this is the report on the meeting that took place at Jarvis Collegiate on Wednesday night and uh, hosted by John Tory, infamous Toronto radio host announcer. And uh, there was an undemocratic format and they didn't seem to be ready for me. Okay, so on the afternoon of the debate, to which I had not received an invitation, I got a telephone call from the organizer of the debate telling me I was invited to come. And I went, oh, wonderful. I'm always happy to come and explain what I want to do. And he said, no, 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 no. You can come and pass out your literature, but you can't participate in the debate. And I said, well, you know, that's pretty upsetting. Mr. John Torrey, the moderator, he should know better. Uh, I said, we go back a bit of a ways and uh, just tell him I'm not very happy. So I get a call a little while later saying, oh, listen, I just want to explain that it wasn't Mr. John Tory who has, you know, uh, decided on excluding the other candidates. This was a decision taken by our association, not by him. Well, sadly, when he was a candidate, he accepted the unfair time as the police took me away. And, uh, you know, he might have won that election if he'd been the champion of democracy like Bob Mitchell or... Peter Worthington had good Tories, but instead he let them take me away. I called him a chicken and he lost by 1%. Maybe those Tories would have come out and supported him a little more strongly. Leader of the Tory party getting defeated in a by-election to get into Parliament? If he'd stood up for democracy, and he didn't. And here he is now moderating a crooked debate. Radio announcer, well-known, right down in Toronto. So he thinks, I would have thought he would have warned the moderators of what was going to happen especially after what happened on Saturday, having that whole St. Michael's debate canceled because I refused to leave the stage. So, oh, of course, they didn't read about it, didn't make the news. So they weren't ready for me when I showed up. Um, unfortunately, uh, it was set up. I went in there and I... Uh, you know, immediately started saying, well, look, there's only four chairs. I want to participate, you know, and uh, not allowed, I'm told. So I walk up and down the aisles for a little while, and I say, come on, let everybody participate. Da, da, da. And I see that the stage is empty. So I say, ah, oh, what the heck? Just it's like four minutes after 7 o'clock, things should be started by now. So I now go on stage. And I start explaining, come on now, I want the right to participate in all that stuff for five or ten minutes before the camera got there to turn on and catch this part. So, now, here's the story out of the Globe and Mail next day. Toronto Center by-election debate puts income inequality at center stage. And, of course, it talks about all the boring stuff that happened. And at the very end, it says... The debate was held before a packed auditorium at Jarvis Collegiate. The event was delayed by about a half an hour after candidate John Turmel, who was not invited to this debate of the four major parties, disrupted proceedings. Organizers called police to have Mr. Turmel removed. Wow! A half an hour disruption. That's one pretty big disruption. Probably the biggest disruption people have ever seen in their lives. So I'm going to show you some of the pictures taken by the Toronto Star's Steve Russell. Uh, you can find online of this super disruption. All right. This 30-minute disruption of their lives. Me asking for the right to speak, please. Come on, come on, don't take me away. Oops. Oh, that was clapping for something. Yes, sir, you had to be stentorian if you wanted to be heard at the back of the room. Had to use the frame. Yes, sir. Oh, some people must have been telling me they weren't happy I was there. Yes, sir. They want to come and pick a fight with Jiu-Jitsu John? Come on up. Anyway, I'm going to now read you the transcript of everything I said. 
because the audio is too far to sometimes hear what I'm saying. And then at least you'll have an idea of what's being said and you might hear it better. So, at the end, when the police take me out, here's what I tell them my story is. I'm a candidate, they invited us to come but not participate in the debate. So I went on stage, said I have a right to participate. They said if you don't move, they'd have you removed. And then they called to have me removed. So the officer said, Mr. Termel, how do you feel now? Do you feel you've had your say? I said, yes, I'm not going back in there. I know if I did, I'd be arrested. I've seen that happen. I saw a guy back once get go back in and get arrested. And that was Mark Gauvin in 1982 at my site, johntermel.com slash prspol82.htm. And then he said, sir, you have, oh, the principal of the school came and told my cameraman, you have to turn your camera off. You're in my school. This is private. You have to turn it off. I'm the principal of Jarvis. And I said, excuse me, there are other cameras in there. And the officer said, we don't mind. Our lives are being recorded. So I said, I'm not going to go back. I've said my piece. Okay, sorry to have called you out many times. If other candidates say let him stay, they back down. So I always ask them to see if they'll let me stay. So the video starts with the moderator saying, after I've been up there a while, in the event that activities here are going to be disrupted, we are forced to halt the event. And I said, I'm the candidate who cared to come to this crooked debate. They're excluding someone who cares. Someone's screaming, you weren't invited. One more chair and I'll sit down. And they're screaming, sit down, sit down. I went, oh no, can't have too many ideas to swell your brain. Um, I said, oh yeah. Hanford has 200,000 tons of nuclear waste that's going to kill us soon unless we bury it. You can't bury it. You got no money. Moderator came over and said, would you enjoy participating in this debate? I said, yes, I would. From the audience, I said, I'd enjoy participating in a chair on stage like the others. Don't try and demean me. Oh, and some ladies screamed, you're demeaning the debate, sir. Someone else screamed, we don't want to hear from you. I said, old lady says she doesn't want to hear. I'm looking for people who are going to understand Fukushima. Not the old, slow person like you, get it? I'm looking for the kids. What do I care what you want to hear? See my John Tory video I mentioned on YouTube, publishing that night. And I said, remember the Spadina incident where the moderator pushed me off the stage and I pushed him back. Remember, all I wanted was to answer the question. He said, just the big three. Well, now you've got four. Big improvement on your democracy. Moderator says, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of being calm and order, we're not going to take any action against this individual. The police has been called, and if he chooses not to leave until someone in law enforcement removes him, that's his choice. I say, you guys called the cops to stop me from speaking? Yes, bring in John Law. Candidate wants to speak, wants to talk about Fukushima. I'm talking to the people. This guy comes up, tries to divert me. I said, not this guy not listening. I'm talking about danger, dead fish in your fish ponds, radiation in your water. Wake up, we can't afford to bury it. We have to decommission it in Canada and help them bury it over there. Go see my video at YouTube or watch Rogers, my four minutes. So I explained the Argentine solution. Remember Argentina went broke in 2001, paid off all their foreign debt by 2006. How'd they do that? Union said, we'll take bonds if we can use them for hydro taxes, medical licenses. Everyone took them, no layoffs, more employment, all foreign debt paid off in five years. We can do it too. What do I care what you think? Scotty to the captain, wake up. The ship's in danger. John the engineer's warning you. Principal comes up and tells me, you're a bad example for the students in the audience. And I said, they're going to learn about demo how democracies run in Canada. And the, for the kids, I said, I'm also the great Canadian gambler, so I don't take Fukushima lightly. How many of you saw rounders? Hold them, players. I was the professor at the Taj Mahal. John the Engineer, check it out. So you think I might worry about what you think when we could all be dead in a couple of weeks? Morons, the ship's in danger. Scotty to the captain. Your vote's the only way out. Isn't this sad? At least you didn't vote to put me out. The liberals voted to let me stay. Back in 1988, Mac Harb, where the Tories and the NDP voted against. I remember in 80, Bob Mitchell, 81, Peter Worthington, they weren't going to let me stay. And Mitchell and Worthington spoke up, said, let him stay. Moderators backed down. So when the candidates got balls, the moderators backed down. These candidates got no balls, no sportsmanship. Fukushima, hope I scared you, scary stuff. 
nuclear dumps and half the world going off in a nuclear cascade as the people die. March 25th, 2011, Health Canada turned off the fallout detectors just before the plume hit BC. I called it. My video said, duck and cover. Baby deaths tripled in BC. Har har. Nobody listened. They turned off the fallout detectors. Think about that. Didn't want to scare you. Baby deaths tripled. Go check. They're going to protect you? Tell you the truth? These four candidates? I called it in BC. Triple the baby deaths. I warned you in BC and now I'm warning you now. If Fukushima starts a fuse, it's a chain reaction. Wake up. They can pay the workers in bonds like the Argentines did to bury it. Who wouldn't take Ontario bonds they can use for hydro, medical, licenses, and taxes? Hey, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? I want to come and talk, want you to come and talk to me, someone says. I said, I don't care what you want. Go get yourself a badge before I talk to you. I don't care what your kids see. I'm going to show them what democracy is about. Go get a badge and come back and talk to me. I'm a bad example for the kids. I hope they don't turn out like him. I'm a bad example for the kids fighting for my right to take part in a debate. Yeah, watch, kids. This is what your parents wrought sitting by watching this happen. How sad. So anyway, there's a way of paying to bury nuclear. That's what I want to talk about. How to bury nuclear before it blows. So before you're like the BC babies, before I can say I was right, cheers when three police officers enter and remove unwanted candidate from the same old debate. My last words being taken away are an apt joke on the soon to be dead voters cheering not having to hear about how to pay to bury nuclear before it blows. So before you're like the base BC babies, before I can say I was right, come with me, said the officer. He who laughs, laugh, even in heaven. Har, 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 har. Now, in the event that the activities here are going to be completely disrupted, we will
your parents God Send you by watching this happen. How sad. So anyway, way of pain to bury no fear. And that's what I want to talk about. How to pay to bury no fear. Before it blows. So before you're like the BC babies. Before I can say, I was right. Turn your video camera off. No, you're school. you're in my you're in my school. It's a private. Please, you have to turn but it he's off. He's a candidate. Right? Yeah, I'm, but I'm the, this is my school. I'm the principal of Jarvis. But I'm the candidate. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't mind if he. You guys. It's a, all lives are being recorded. So. Oh, he's he's just I hired me to film. Yeah. I'm with the I'm Terry Parker. Sorry. I'm Terry Parker. Five I'm, five I'm Terry Parker. Five I'm trying to be. Oh. He has to film this. He'll take off. Don't worry about boss. What's that? He'll take off. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm not going to go on to the place. Okay. Sorry to call you up. Yes, but you know, many times when you look at you, they see them skating back there on this day. So I always try that. All right, sorry to call you up. Take it easy, buddy. Thanks, boss. Okay. I'll let you think so. Go see me on He's the hardcore candidate. Go slow, boss. So, that's basically what happened. Now, next day's news of the major disruption. Toronto Star, big picture of the two leading candidates only. And didn't use the picture of the disruptor and the major disruption because they didn't mention the disruption in the Toronto Star. The guys with all the pictures, okay? Story was killed. And, of course, uh, City News, same thing. No mention about the major disruption. And uh, so, anyway, isn't that kind of neat? The greatest disruption in the history of Toronto politics. And it got shut down except for a little mention about this half an hour disruption by a candidate over being excluded. Well, anyway, so that's the end of that election. I wanted to go to the next one at the Rosedale United Church where I would have had to do the very same thing. And no invitation. I was going to show up, do the same, be removed. Hey, my record is being removed four times in one election in Brantford. The Dave Lavac election. Four times out of ten meetings I was removed by police. So that nowhere near close to Dave Lavac's record for watching his opponent being taken away. 
Anyway, um, with that election being so, here I am on the way to Toronto, left two and a quarter hours early for something that could take one hour in optimal time. And just as I hit the west end of Toronto, past the 427, the gardener jams up for the next 16 clicks down to Dufferin. And I got to get to the east end and up the Don Valley. And at 35 minutes to, I knew I'd never make it. So I turned around, came home. So, candidate does not disrupt meeting again to not be mentioned anyway. So that's the end of it, except for pointing out that Canada's parliamentary channel, of course, had a big debate of only the four parliamentary parties. And uh, new ideas you're never going to see on the parliamentary channel. It's always got to be the same old thing. It's the parliamentary channel after all you're not going to hear from guys who just want to get into parliament to do new stuff you don't get to hear from the guys who are in parliament who keep trying the same old stuff and and of course we got uh, tvo steve pakin running his crooked four candidate election as usual and you know you think about it that's thousands and thousands and thousands of people that only they get to talk to and that's how democracies run in Canada but finally even at the Toronto Star when you go there who did cover it and did have some they did put a picture with all four candidates but if you click on their video they don't even show the videos of the Tory and the green guys saying anything ha <laughs> ha imagine those guys get cheated I wonder how they're feeling right now well, they deserve it for not standing up for me too, especially the Greens. You know, they used to fight for the right of everyone to speak when they were being excluded. But now that they're in, oh, things seem okay now. So that's it. My 79th election. I guess on Monday I will break my second record and go from 77 to 78 losses. Let's never forget the one that was called off, which explains the discrepancy. I was in it, but no result. I didn't lose it. So, let's see if Super Loser fails again to explain to them how to bury nuclear before the Fukushima fuse blows to set off a nuclear cascade. Ha ha ha! He who laughs last, even if it's in heaven. So, end of election, and I didn't get to debate the major candidates once. Democracy in Canada. Boy, but did Justin Trudeau's one-minute promotional ad ever fall flat. Haven't heard a word about it. So you can see that if you YouTube for Termel and Tru Justin Trudeau, what I think of his one-minute ad. I did a video. But uh, so that it was a fun election. Um, how undemocratic, you know, and the joke is on them if the Fukushima fuse blows. <laughs>